Well, it is August 2012. As you guys can see, I'm still using that very stained and probably at this point overused blue reviewing cloth here in the background. Maybe I'll swap it out one of these days. I don't know. A lot going on here in TMP. Other important stuff, and as I've said before in my reviews, whether you're talking movies or review videos, it ain't about the special effects, it's about the story. And the story in this video is going to be about a knife that I'm excited about. Equally capable in both first kind of cool and second kind of cool. A few TMPers catch my drift. Talking about, you know it, you've seen the title. Oh, that's a thwack. The Lion Steel SR1 Aluminum version. That's right. I am focusing on the aluminum version, recommending recommending it to my TMP viewing audience. As a high-end carry blade, it's high value. Keep in mind the titanium version, which I personally have lusted after, for several years, is around $400. That's a cool HEC blade, but I'm going to tell you right now, this aluminum version will deliver pretty much all the coolness and all the capability of the titanium Menaggio Italy produced Lion Steel regular SR1. So I'm focusing on this aluminum one that's going to be over $150 cheaper. That's right. That's why I am excited about the blade. That's not to say I could not get excited about the SR1 titanium version. I am, but I think in serving your purposes, my subscribers to the Nut and Fancy Project, this is a better recommendation. And it is a sick blade. Equally capable in first and second type of cool, just like I said at the outset. We'll talk about more of the specifics. Let me introduce the players. This is the one I tested hard for this review. Yeah, I did. I th pretty much thumped on it. Got that one. So satin finish, dark green handle. That is a good looking color combination. Here comes another one. Check it. Crimson. Oh, Crimson red black blade. I do believe the black blade is a Blade HQ exclusive and that is where I'm recommending you go and buy these knives and I want you to go to the Nut and Fancy exclusive page for a discount. May not be a lot. I'll save you a few bucks. I do the best I can. It helps that you guys watch the videos because I can get you some deals. That's a good looking blade. It really is. Dark red. It's just gorgeous. Love the black blade and the SR1A as well. And actually this is going to be my favorite color combination. If they have any, buy it now because it will sell out. Here it comes. The orange and black SR1 aluminum. Oh my gosh, I just love that color. It is so cool. It's classy and technical at the same time. All of the colors are, but I really love the orange and black. It's just a fabulous coloration. Look at how handsome those blades are. I mean... And I might as well start into, I don't know, my ridiculous philosophy of use discussion like I always do. But we're talking about how the blades look and how many things, I've said this in some other reviews before, but how many things can you daily carry that are this cool? Now there's a lot of great blades that I've reviewed through the years, more coming. I'm going to show you some competitive options as I usually do. They're equally as cool. But we're talking about, in this case, a large folding knife. By having it clipped to your pocket, you're going to have a smile on your face as you go through your day. I'm assuming it's legal wherever you're at, dude. You're just going to be enjoying your day because you have a freaking cool blade with you. I do. Yes, I know. We're freaks. We're freaks of nature. I admit it. We love knives. The reason I bring this up is you can't do that usually with your favorite gun. Let's say you have a 308 battle rifle. Can you take that to work? Nope. You can with a knife. So that will dovetail into my concept of what I've called here in 2012 and beyond the high-end carry concept. 
that you're willing to carry a more expensive blade daily in your life. You just are. Yeah, it's expensive, but you dig it. You're going to put hard wear on it, and you're just like, hey, it's built to take it. I'm going to do it. This is a great knife for HEC, and that's the first and foremost philosophy of use. You enjoy it because it's a handsome blade and it's capable. HEC. I'll annotate that video at the top. If you're interested, go watch it. I talk about that philosophy in depth, give some logic behind the case I make for HEC. And there's lots of TMPers throughout the world that like HEC knives. They just do. Second philosophy of use is, you guessed it, collectible. An expensive collectible, because when we say collectible, it means you probably are going to get more than one blade. This is a TMP blade. Others loaned. I'd love to have all these colorations. I'm sick. I know it, man. A cool coloration comes out. I'm like, dude, I got half that. That is so cool. You get all the colorations. I mean, you'll go broke doing it. But yeah, as a collectible, you don't have to get them all. Get one and just enjoy it. Don't HEC it. Take care of it and enjoy its looks. Fondle it. Keep it, keep it in your collection like you do probably with a lot of expensive blades you have collectible distinct philosophy of use. I could say gift, but man, you're going to have to really dig somebody to get him this knife. I mean, because that's an expensive knife. But if, I don't know, if they're up for an expensive gift, maybe it's a graduation, you know, maybe it's a retirement, I think it would be an outstanding gift, gift item that will be treasured and remembered forever. Seriously. How about tactical blade? I will say yes, but barely. We'll talk about the traction plan of the SR1 aluminum. It is there. It's not perfect. There are some downsides. But then again, the designers of this knife, Line Steel, Giovanni, they wanted a good-looking blade. They wanted a blade with style. Sometimes you're going to have to make some compromises for absolute traction. I mean, really, if we want absolute traction, why don't we just slap on some very high traction G10? and jimp the freak out of the knife. If we do that, we've got massive traction. I don't know if we have a massively cool blade. You might. There are some cool blades. What do I have clipped to my pocket today? This is not set up. Never is. Of course, Cold Steel Recon 1. That is a good example of what I'm talking about. Massively cool? Perhaps not. But as a tactical blade? Yeah! It's cool. High traction G10. I skateboarded the top on that sucker. I'll call that good for the philosophy of use discussion. Hope you liked it. How about size and weight on this sucker? Guess guess what? This uh, this knife is actually one ounce lighter than the titanium version. Another reason I'm excited about it. The titanium version I think is around 6.5 ounces. This one on my scale, 5.6. Yes, I know it's heavier than four ounces, but it is a big blade. 3.7 inches modified drop point mostly flat ground from the upper portion so that's a big blade it's also thick check that out 0.177 inches in thickness it's a big old slab in the aluminum version of German D2 steel we'll talk about that here in a sec so that's a big blade so 5.6 ounces, in my estimation, is actually a decent weight for such a broad blade. You notice it's not narrow, it's broad, and it's thick. So that's a strong blade, thick. They did everything possible, as we will see, in saving weight in the handle. Great job, line steel. So I think the weight's reasonable. Another reason I would prefer it, again, over the titanium. Looking at the blade specifically, it has some good things and some bad things. First, the bad. I generally don't prefer, this is just me, a broad, broad and aggressive sweep at the end right here. I think it's excellent, and I forgot to mention this philosophy of use, for food preparation. It has a lot of belly coming here. You can roll cut. Maybe whatever else you're doing, maybe as a skinning blade, if you were to ever put this knife in it, I think you could probably choose a lot of better options just because you're going to get blood and guts and all this. Cleaning it out is just going to be a nightmare. So in some POUs, having that 
aggressive upsweep makes a lot of sense. But for the way I generally use this knife, and if we want to say it in a tactical philosophy of use, it's not preferred by me. That's the downside. I did stab cut a lot with the very blade you're looking at. We're talking through like, I don't know, however many layers I stacked up of cardboard. I mean, I was thumping on this thing. I wanted to see how to penetrate. And it performed about as, as expected. Wasn't superior, but it was adequate. I mean, that's just physics, right? I mean, it's a. this is not a real penetrating point. You want a penetrating point, and yes, this is a competitive option if you can find it. Microtech SOCOM, reviewed, Hall of Famer here in TMP. Another HEC option. Now, that's a penetrating blade. I'm showing this by way of contrast. I would like to see this style of blade in this handle, Lion Steel. Please do that. You would have another big selling win on your hand. So it's basically the same handle. This elegant and very sharp drop point. It's just me. Maybe some other TMPers out there would like to see it too. So that's a bad part of it. I, I really shouldn't say bad. It's just a consideration for you. It does utility tasks well. I carried this knife for several months. It did great. No problems. That's about all the bad. The good side is this. It comes very sharp out of box. Has a great relief edge on it. Convex, if I'm not mistaken. That is a convex edge. So flat ground here, and then they convex edge it here. Huh. So I'm not a great convex edge knife sharpener, but nothing fancy is so easy. It's the easiest edge in the world to sharpen. I've heard it all, dudes. I don't like it. I like using my Edge Pro Apex. Slap it on there and I just reprofile this one with a 21 degree angle after all the cardboard cutting, which by the way went pretty good. I pretty much always do that with the blades that I really love. I just want to see how the steel will do and I will say this is probably the best D2 steel I've used in a while. One, it held its edge pretty good. Cardboard dulls every knife I've ever tried that with. But the real love happened during sharpening. Yes, it's hard to sharpen. It was a dedicated effort to resharpen it. One is that I'm going from convex to conventional relief edge. I understand that. So there's a little bit of grinding going on there. Might as well show you this. What it looks like. That's pretty sick. There's that box. That'd be good to focus against. Oh, that's cool. And another one is it's hard D2 steel, right? We know that. Is D2 my favorite steel? Nope, it is not. I have lots of others I would prefer over D2. It works though. It's a semi stainless tool steel. The German D2 steel is outstanding. I mean, this took an edge that is just frightening, frightening in sharpness. Yeah, I've worked it down to a thousand grit. Nice edge resulting. One thing I would love to see out of this model is a removable thumb stud. Maybe a screw on the other side. Sometimes like other makers do, Cold Steel does that. The reason being is you don't have a lot of flats for a consistent edge sharpener like EPA. and You gotta be very careful you're not rolling it while you're sharpening it. But then fancy, it's a convex edge. I'm just gonna keep it and sharpen it like that. Okay, I get it, do it. I like my EPA, it's just fast and it works. Let's see other good things about the blade. Told you how thick and strong it was. Penetrated well with cardboard. Told you that. It's good looking. I think lines wise we're talking aesthetics only. It is a good looking blade. The finishing on it is superb. In fact the quality levels throughout the aluminum SR1 flawless. Flawless. I've reviewed some other Italian knives and I'm talking you know some good some bad to be honest and one of the bad, I think, was a DPX Hest, right? I think that's also made by Lime Steel. <clears throat> yeah, that got a non non recommendation out of me. Unless it get, the design gets changed, I don't think it's a quality problem. It's more of a design error with its locking bar in that particular blade. Let's go to speed at this point. First off, let's take a look in here, and you will see two Teflon washers right there. See it? Double layer. The blade is a perfectly balanced and fast manual action folder. Again, proving you don't need an auto if you don't want an auto. Lock up, tight, no side to side, no up and down, no issues, even after hard cardboard cutting. 
This has the roto block in it. What that means, dudes, is you can rotate this in this direction right there, and it prevents the locking bar from disengaging, supposedly turning it into a fixed blade. Oh, gosh, here we go again. I wish no manufacturers would say that because a fixed blade is a fixed blade, and I have not seen a folding knife yet that can compete with the strength of a fixed blade. Now, they don't sell this as, hey, this is going to be just a strong survival knife and all that marketing. They just say it turns it into a fixed blade, but I'd be very careful about it. A fixed blade, I don't know, just because it's here on the table. The Kershaw 1065 Diskin. Now, that's a fixed blade. Now, I can baton with that one and not have to worry about the lock bar failing on it. This is not, even if it has a rotor block. No, I didn't baton with it. Not going to do that. Because I... Every frame lock I've done that on, I have made it fail with simple batoning. Simple batoning. There's unlocking the rotor block. It actually serves a much more important function in me, in my mind, uh, and that is preventing hyperextension of the aluminum locking bar. Like that. So you push very hinder like. It will not allow you to hyperextend this locking bar. And use, I never locked it and turned it into. That fancy aluminum folder, I just don't know if I can trust it. Well, take it from me. Trust it. I think it's every bit as good and strong as a titanium folder. The locking bar is not aluminum, so you're having actually a hardened, hardened stainless steel insert on the back of the blade tang. There's your engagement surface after all the testing I put this knife through. Perfection. You have some wear available to you then there as well and you can also swap out that locking bar insert even better isn't that a cool presentation right there it just looks good it is a technical looking knife so speed and lockup are absolutely flawless and now if you did get some wiggle I don't think you will but if you did you can adjust your pivot points and as you can see it is proprietary thankfully a proprietary tool is included this end will adjust the pivot point. This end here will take on our switch sides on the clip, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Lock up and strength, outstanding. Handle material, aluminum. I think 6000 series aluminum. This is a metal folding knife done correctly. I've reviewed some other ones that I didn't dig so much. Not so much. This one, superb at least in looks. When I say traction plan on the SR1 aluminum, it's more about aesthetics if we're honest. You have some milled in striations here and they are very cool looking. Do they provide any meaningful traction? No, not really. However, you do have a nice choil here in the handle that locks in the hand and wait for it, jumping. It's a very short run on a very small thumb ramp, but it's sharp and it's there so you can actually lock in very well in conventional grip on the SR1 reverse grip you know it look at how they milled that handle out isn't that sick so they're drilling it out as much as they can there's no stupid steel inserts in there the only steel insert you got is right there where we need it as an engagement surface the roto block of course that handle is just really beautiful. I just love it. Part of us loving knives is just the technical achievement of a certain blade and how it connects to us. This knife connects to me. I knew it would since I saw the SR1 even in picture form. I was like, that's going to be a beautiful, beautiful knife. By the way, no sharp corners on that handle if we're talking about ergonomics. I, in use, you won't notice any hot spots. The handle is large enough for my hands. I'm large. I'm not really banging my pinky on it. Nice big lanyard hole there if you need it. Good job on the handle. The ergonomics on it are excellent. Clip design. It's short and it carries the knife deep and it's strong and it's attached with a hardened bolt. Which supposedly doubles as a glass breaker. No, I didn't test that. We've seen that before in some other knives I've reviewed, right? It's nice having the option. It's broad and it wasn't obtrusive in the pocket where I'm hurting my hand on it. I like having the option. You can swap it left to right and thankfully it carries a right orientation. <laughs> Tip up! You know it. I'll show you this crimson one. 
Love the clip actually. It carries very nicely. Has that tool once again. No Wizard of Oz issues going on on it. Which, by the way, I forgot to talk about the thumb studs. Fully ambidextrous. This is a great lefty knife for you guys. There's your stop pin right there. Nice and strong. See that? Nice positive lockup. Oh man, this is a cool freaking blade, dudes. Cool blade. How about that handle retention? I'm so glad I remembered that. Perfection. No tenacious cuts here. You can if you want. I'll do this off camera because I don't have enough room. Shake it out of the handle if you want. Centering, as you have probably noticed, is perfection. On all three of these knives, I didn't see any centering problem at all on any SR1 that I've examined. That takes as a durability. I would not fret about it being an aluminum versus a titanium blade. I think it's going to be every bit as durable. I haven't seen any issues with a lock bar in my, in my use. And no, this is not like a long-term test. We're talking about two months I've been using it. But I just don't, don't think you're going to see a problem. You know, Line Steel says they tested it well over a year and they've had zero problems. I don't know, that's just the way I see it. The blade steel is good. You know, D2, is that my favorite? Again, no. I don't think you're going to chip it out unless you really hard use it. Holds an edge pretty good. Once you reprofile it, it's, a, it's going to be a lot easier to sharpen. Durability, excellent value. On we go to competitive offerings. I'm going to start off with a knife you have not seen in front of the TMP camera. It's coming right now. Hope you like it. How about the ZT Hinderer 0560? Six ounces L Max steel. This is a cool freaking blade right here, boys. Very cool. About the same weight. The price on it is going to be about the same. By the way, this one's going to be about 245 normally priced. Nothing fancy discount code. Less. Cool blade. Great jimping. Technical looking. Titanium on that side. It's a beautiful blade. This is a full on heavy duty tactical folder. No joke. That's a great option for it. I like the blade shape a little bit better on that ZT0560. How about this? Sabenza 21. Oh, dudes. Wait. I probably shouldn't be showing this knife because it's in a different price category. And that is to say, it's expensive. $410 for this? Wow, 4.6 ounces, S35 VN steel. No, not really a competitive option. option. It's twice the price of the SR1 AL, more or less. This one isn't though. It is a 6061, T6, or 6061 aluminum handled Hogue. EX1 in OD. Stonewashed blade. 5.8 ounces, 154 CM steel, about 150 bucks. It's a good option. Doesn't have near the coolness of the SR1, but it is much less expensive and it is a big knife and it comes razor sharp. Competitive option there for you. And then I already showed you this one. I got to wrap it up. The Microtech SOCOM Hall of Famer here in TMP. That's amazing. An amazing blade. It's an amazing technical achievement because it only weighs 4.4 ounces. And I would say every bit as strong as this blade, the SR1. Kind of a different flavor of knife in some ways because this one is, I think, OD aluminum, carbon fiber inserts, captured liner lock, S35 VN steel, glass breaker, great knife. It's just, it's also very capable, first and second kind of cool. Love it. Love this knife. But does it have the striking good looks of the SR1? I don't know. I don't know. You know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. The SR1 is just flat out a handsome, handsome blade. It just looks good. It presents well. Has an extremely high cool factor to it. And that's all fine and dandy, but if it doesn't perform, at least here in the Nut and Fancy Project, you're never going to get a review from me out of it if it's just a show knife. There's lots of blades that just look good, but they cannot perform. This ain't one of them, dudes. This is a performer, heavy-duty folding knife. Do you want to call it a tactical knife? I don't know. You, you decide. It's a heavy-duty knife with reasonable limits, and it also is a fabulously good-looking blade. 
roto lock insert CNC milled handle beautiful clip by the way I love that black and clip on the colorations it's an option oh my gosh I love the SR1 aluminum I'll tell you what I love the titanium too but for $150 not getting the aluminum come on come on unless you're just made of money it's a no brain decision man go get one you will love it trust me this is nothing fancy thanks everybody